dragon and a possum walk into a library looking to watch a presentation on dusty griffins and really small corks presented by Scarlet Kitty. Meanwhile, in the background, J. Mac the librarian just is just doing her job of telling us to be quiet while she's just getting things back into place. There's a joke in there somewhere. Hi, I'm a trash panda named Possum. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyways, welcome to the uh, tiebreaker for the first place between Dusty Griff and Micro Corks. Um, whoever wins this goes first. Um, I've got nothing more than that to say. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be an absolutely awesome matchup between uh, Dusty Griff and Micro Corks. Uh, for those who are familiar with the Free Enterprise scene, uh, you you know him, you love him. Dusty Griff been around for basically as long as Free Enterprise has been around and has been winning and placing highly in tournaments the entire time. Uh, but not to be outdone, Micro Korgs has also placed incredibly well uh, recently. I believe finishing top eight, maybe even top four in the last tournament. Uh, has done incredibly well himself. So this is two giants of the game right now facing off. Uh, Micro Korg's only loss so far was to Dusty Griff. Dusty Griff's only loss was to Commander Leonhardt in this very competitive group. Uh, so I, for one, am very interested to see how this rematch plays out. Uh, winner takes all in this group and gets to punch their ticket straight to brackets. Yeah, Dust Griff, if since losing to Martin, has been an, out on an absolute tear, going f uh, winning four straight games. Michael Korg's wanting to get back that loss given to him by Dusty Griff if, and go on to face um, whoever is in the uh, w waiting in for them in that bracket phase. Yes. So, yeah, and, and objective, <laughs> objective wise today we've got cr vanilla crystal sword altar, vanilla white spear altar, so two moon own places there, uh, tower zot, launch the falcon, forging, trading away the rat tail, and the queen of the town of monsters. Oh, that's weird. I thought we were getting fusoya and we were yeeting fusoya and taking iridia on the moon as an anchor. Uh, she can go to the Z fight, but it's going to be at 4 agility, level 1, and 30 HP. Oh, oh, oh those are the fake objectives. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, we do have a sit oh. start for these real objectives, though, and that's a character I love to see personally. I know a lot of folks aren't real big on Sid, but early on he is such a hard carry, uh, basically soloing the overworld with the right weaponry. Uh, and a Tella, this is a beautiful start in my eyes. Uh, a tower key, a couple of elixirs in there. That's good stuff. Yeah, no, Sid is a lot of early game power. Tella, utility, he got a few decent spells to start off with. Gear 2, which is pretty much all you need for the very early game. I mean, Blink and Exit, two very nice utility spells. And, well, some elemental spells if you need them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Poydrak, I know you also are a runner in this tournament, uh, myself as well. I see this Tella, I see this Sid. I definitely want to pick up my free key item, but then there's a choice to be made. And that choice is where do you loot? And for me with that Tella, I'm thinking Watery Pass instead of what has been the more conventional Eblin Castle on this flag set. What's your thought on the early loot here uh, after we pick up this free key item from Bedward? There's been a number of different locations for looting, and the Eblin, um, uh, the Eblin Castle is a popular one, and the uh, Watery Pass is a good one. Um, but with this hook that's picked up, uh, which is fairly early, we may see a Cave Blana being our choice of looting today. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. That hook changes the game plan very rapidly, probably takes Watery Pass out. Uh, also, that hook could potentially open up a character check, and with a Leviathan summon in the public treasury here, there is uh, maybe some hopeful Rydia fans out there for the little girl to be on the hook route today, and we might get some Leviathan action. 
Yeah. Now, without that particular hook, though, I'm a big fan of Watery Pass with or without Teller, so I tend to go through that. It it's a, it really depends on how much looting you're wanting to do. So I know you're a big fan of trying to loot as little as possible, only getting as much power as you need to to complete uh, to run over the seat. Yeah, I mean, for I'm, me, uh... I'm a little bit like that too. <laughs> Yeah, I would pick one location. It would either be Watery Pass or it would be uh, Cave Ablana. It wouldn't be both, but that's a me thing. And I think one of the most important parts of Free Enterprise, and this is whether you're a new runner, a, a grizzled veteran, loot until you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable with what you found, keep looting. You're going to find stuff, especially with this T Wildish. Uh, we found now Crystal Ring, Ogre Axe, and things like that. That Ogre Axe for Sid is a huge initial power spike. Cannot understate for Korgs how much uh, help that is going to be. Yeah, and Dusty Griff, if taking in a few of the chests in in Damsion, and very, uh, it's a very dense location, the loot isn't quite as good, but you do have, even in under T-Wildish, a good amount of chance to get something fairly decent and you're not looking at really high-end gear in any place anyway so yeah why not yeah and uh speaking of high-end gear and people who can't use it anyway here's an edward up on hobbs uh looks like korgs is going to go through this and take on this uh this cpu fight i'm a little surprised by this given that we have a hook character available but Eddie does come with a dancing dagger, and that is unironically the best weapon that our characters have access to right now. Uh, that dancing dagger going to be putting out a ton of damage, but looks like Korgs may be thinking Edward Anchor as he is uh, donning the character right now. Uh, meanwhile, Dusty Griff spikes a random Murasami just laying around in uh, Eblin Cave as well. So that's a pretty huge pickup if an Ed shows up. Yeah. My little worry about this particular fight like that Michael calls this is taking Yes, there's you get the Edward, but um the experience is going on to a Sid who doesn't really need it and, and doesn't gain anything from that a small amount of it hip experience. And the same with Teller. So there's there's not a whole lot I feel of gain from it. Yeah, I would say this is kind of like a, a key item check that zonks in the sense that he picked up a crystal ring. Uh, that gives Microcorks two crystal rings already, which for me, I, I absolutely adore crystal rings. I think they are so great. Uh, I would not be displeased with that result if I were Korgs. Uh, what I would be displeased if I were Dusty, <laughs> we have found our dupe, y'all. And not only is it a teledupe, which is arguably the worst, uh, maybe Edward is worse, but it's basically a toss-up. That's an Odin on the hook route. That's not fun. <laughs> that isn't fun, but... It... Especially with what, uh, what we've seen so far, I think it's all going to boil down to what other key items we find on the overworld and who is in the... Baron in because this these four characters that we've seen so far not really what you want for going up against an Odin yeah Teller can you, uh, do pretty well once Ordeals is done and Lip 3 becomes available but he's slow and Odin's fast yeah and as chat is pointing out Edward does provide a niche angle towards that Odin uh our runners, I assume, are both familiar with Thunderstruck strats for Odin, however difficult they may be. Now, an Artemis bow that Dusty Griff just picked up makes that a lot easier, uh, especially if combined with a potential crystal ring, should he find one. Uh, those would be huge pickups, much more reasonable than a samurai bow that pops out of Antlion Cave. That is really not what Korgs wanted to see there. Um, but we shall see what approach our runners take towards that Odin. There's even the potential that a double Tella 
both casting lit three becomes a reality for this exact party and that exact boss, especially if Baronin is something like a Porum or possibly even a Palum where you're not gonna get the same impact damage as you would from a lit three casting Tela. So a lot of decisions to be made based on who shows up in that Baron Inn, as you alluded to earlier, Poydrak. Yeah, and another thing that might come to pass is those, uh, that Artemis bow goes great with the starting lit arrows that Sid was, uh, uh, that Sid came, came with. So we could see a Berserk Tub Sid doing fairly well. You know, we're uh, just, attacking from range range he has a lot of hit, uh, hit points get him up to around about 13 1400 he can survive one of those slash um, those those odin attacks and that might be enough to get you through yeah the the zantetsukan attack is not going to be too terribly scary there um especially for a a heavily guarded and well uh HP'd Sid, if you will. Give him a couple levels, like you said. Get him a couple hundred extra HP. It also gets him some strength. Uh, Sid gains strength very rapidly, so he can do a number with those lit arrows. Uh, so I do wonder if that ends up being our runner's angle uh, on that Odin. Looks like we are getting a bit of a fire sale from Korgs. Uh, gonna pick up a couple of kamikazes, as did Dusty, so, but a bit of a blank shop there with, uh, with just Elixirs and Leviathan. Not too bad, uh, though. Uh, uh, elixirs, yeah, you're not usually going to buy them, but it's good to know where they are just in case of emergencies. And you might have a few extra bits of, of money just lying around on your way through. And just picking up maybe two isn't bad. Uh, especially with a teller who has a limited MP pool anyway. Yeah, anything that can go towards helping that Tela, uh, you know, be able to cast more blinks, cure fours, lit threes, etc., could definitely come in handy. Um, I do wonder if that's a future runner problem where they might consider those elixirs on the way back down later, uh, as neither one is going to be, you know, single dipping this hook route. Uh, this is going to be a mandatory double dip. Uh, should this even prove to be our logical underground access? Uh, Fabul Defense remains, Ordeals remains, and Baron Inn remains. So we do still have three overworld checks to go. Uh, and Dusty is going to prioritize Mount Ordeals, which makes a lot of sense since we have the very unique opportunity to power up not one, but two Tellas on the overworld. Yeah, and with Sid, you, you, you're not really afraid of anything that's going to be up here. Uh, Tella can... And do the defending and basically with blink and curing and Sid is really your big damage dealer here. Yeah, Sid would be the big damage dealer. I guess the the only potential scary things would be like a back attack Golbez could potentially cause some issues if the crystal rings have not been found uh, by Dusty, but outside of that it's pretty safe for Sid uh, and Asura is annoying here, but with any sort of mute type mage mashing, this won't be too bad. Uh, if there's no mage mashing, then it just becomes a life lock, which is also not the, the hardest thing to pull off here, especially for a runner of uh, Dusty's caliber. Yeah, Michael Corks did find the Stalman chest, took that out with the Ogre Axe that Sid is currently using. so good bit of giant kill in there. Don't believe it was anything really to write home about with the item though. Nice stuff about, according to our tracker. So Sid, uh, sorry, te the tellers could use it. Yeah, I mean, a, a life staff is okay. <laughs> like it's not what you want, but it's, it's a means to an end. Uh, Ultimately, I guess, helps preserve life potions as well, since it can be used in battle as a source of life that's never going to miss. Can't be used to life glitch enemies, though. It can only be used on your party. So it has its uses. Uh, it'll probably be more helpful downstream than it is right now, but still a good item to have. Yeah, uh, and there's plenty of, of 
characters later who can wield that life staff to great effect. Right? Rosa, Porum, even Fu. So it's it's an investment type of item, I feel. Yeah, absolutely. And in Korg's case, it took him about the same time to just beat that fight as it would have to reset and reloot. So it, it was kind of a, a neutral time from the time perspective. So there's no reason not to just take out those uh, those stale men and whatever you get, uh, you get from it. And meanwhile, we have Dusty, who is our first runner through that Asura. Uh, and we are going to see how Microcorgs deals with that Asura next. Uh, still a tricky fight, even for a, a runner of Dusty's caliber and, and Korg's caliber. That Asura is not going to be quick. It just it can't be the way our runners have to do it. This Leviathan is a little scary. You might see a safety star veil come out here on Sid just to make sure he doesn't die here from the Ice 2s, which will hit for 550 to almost 700. So we'll see what we get here. Might just also opt for uh, some lightning based items and lightning based attacks, which will do double damage to Leviathan. One of the things that uh, Star Runners have seen, in, in, and I believe it is equipped with, is some Dragoon armor. So those, those items who aren't going to be doing as much damage to this. It, but it, yes, yeah, it, you know, it, the Ice 2 here is still going to be a lot of damage. Yeah, those if they don't, arrows, don't, if they don't hit, hit Sid, <laughs> if they don't hit Sid, you don't mind. Yeah, and those lit arrows, Dusty just plows through that uh, that Leviathan, and those ice is all deciding to go onto that bottom bottom Tella. Fantastic, uh, you know, from Dusty's perspective, that's exactly what you would want there. Uh, no damage to Sid easily gets through that fight. So very well done there. Uh, kind of a tricky ordeals, but masterfully played so far. Michael Corks is taking the life lock strategy with with the Asura. Uh, basically, when you hit it just after it uses life one, and you, it pretty much then just turns back over to life the life one phase and repeats. So as long as you can hit it within this small time, you're good. And rest in peace to our good friend Odin. Uh, as the magma key has been found on our deals here. So our runners get to dodge a major bullet in this seed. Uh, as well prepared as I'm sure they would love to be for that Odin, they now don't have to worry about Odin until far, far later uh, down the road. The launch of the Falcon is an objective, but now it can be placed well on the back burner instead of having to be a worry early on. It does make my uh, um, make me wonder what is in that King Queen Eblen spot. Is it one of our gating bosses? Is it Val? Is it Golbez? Is it Wyvern? Yeah, uh, and we will find out sometime in the future or soon. TM, as we love to say, uh, but not a a worry for our runners or us yet. But definitely something to keep in mind: a surprise Wyvern if our runners don't save and haven't seen Wyvern. Uh, on their way down the hook route much, much later. There is the possibility that they might still do the hook route anyway, I doubt it, uh, before or using the magma key, just to get the objective out of the way. With this particular team, I don't see it happening, but there's always a chance. Yeah, give me an edge with a Murasame and a Thunderclaw. Sure, I I'd be game for that. Sid with lit arrows and a couple tellers and an eddy. Uh, I, I, that, that's a tough sell. I, I don't know about that one. Uh, we do see the danger on Korg's side with this Leviathan. Uh, Sid went down to a massive ice two there, over 900 damage. Uh, and that is the worry at this spot is that Sometimes it can just get the better of you. We are now down to just a single Teller remaining. Uh, so let's see if we get that safety veil on Korg's side. Nope, he's just going to pew pew away and does get through. Was only one hit shy on that Leviathan. So avoiding a bit of disaster there while Dusty Griff shows us uh, Baron in with uh, a couple of guards. This is this is vanilla, yeah, right? And sort of. Um, there was an edge there, so... Uh one part of what you wanted uh, is there. And I believe Murasame has been found. Um, 
as well, so that's two parts. Thunder Thunderclaw might be in the shop. Yeah, and, and that would be enough to make me consider the early hook route, just because it would be air quotes free at that point. Um, but if there's no Thunderclaw, I, I still think you're hard pressed to want to push that, and it would be a, a future Dusty and future Micro Quartz problem. Uh, mean, uh, and of course, the second boss is another Lunar Sparkle. It is, well, sorry, first Lunar Sparkle. Uh, it is Pale Dim. Hard hitting in boss here, but very slow location. You don't have the fastest team, but even the boss here is slower. So these blinks will come out. You'll be well defended. This fight won't be too bad. Yeah, Sid's going to chew through this pretty well. Can even get some supplementary viruses coming out from the Tellas if you want. Uh, Hello will not be able to cast any elemental spells here since Pale Dim absorbs any lightning, fire, or ice. Uh, however, it can still be damaged by virus, by quake, things like that. But Dusty just opts to let Berserk Sid do Berserk Sid things, and he is going to obtain an edge as well as a pan. Uh, so I think that's probably going to put the hook route off indefinitely, because uh, that gives us a pan and a tower key to chase immediately rather than yeah. dealing with the hook route right away. Yeah, that that is four key items checks since Dusty Griff has not done um, uh, Castle for Ball yet. Uh, so the um, the free from the pan itself and the, the for Ball defense, they're very quick, um, very quick check hex, hex. Yeah, you go and do those. Yeah, and even if you want to get frisky, you can just do the half tower play. Um, get that early key item check out of the way. You can also do the Fey March freebie. So our, our runners are going to have somewhere in the neighborhood of five or six relatively free checks available to them in the next 10 or so minutes. So we're about to see a, a lot of work for our tracker, j the Librarian, uh, a lot of buttons to be pushed in the very near future for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm not really a whole lot of gear for that edge a diamond ring wow that's not exactly <laughs> thrilling and but uh yeah uh, it's it's at least something and middle murasame for the weapon and that's it's okay uh, that's not too and that's not a bad starting set yeah i'm a little surprised here dusty griff poking in eblin uh rather than heading underground. I'm curious if he's fishing for adamant armor or potentially a nice dart or maybe even a Cecil weapon for the future. Uh, this is also maybe just a hedge to try not to fall victim to how he lost his one match uh, in this tournament so far where his opponent did end up hitting two adamant armors out of uh, Castle Eblin against him. So I do wonder if that might be looming a little large here. Definitely uh, something I want to inquire with him about post game. Yeah, uh, these um, these Eblin chests have been very notorious in in this tournament so far. Adamants do come out such as that one. Um, so there you go. Yep, yep. Now you just leave. Uh, I think I don't even know if I'd stick around. Uh, I might just say that's good enough. I'm out of here. But Dusty may want to see all of this through. But uh, yeah, that's that's really bad for Micro Korgs. It's really good for Dusty Griff. Uh, Adamant Armors are really good, y'all. They put your opponent on a clock and they make any Zerker, in this case Edge, have an extra three attack multipliers right off the bat. Generally two from Strength and one from Agility. That means that you are going to do a crap load more damage, to put it bluntly. <laughs> yeah, and yes, he's only got a middle and a Murasame, but it, uh, that's that's good enough at this. As with Berserk going and full uh, full tilt as well, you're going to be hitting really hard, especially early at this stage. So. Yeah, you want you want this ed edge to get angry. You want him doing his damage. 
Yeah, that edge is going to be pumping out as we see 11 to 1200 already, which is a huge amount of damage for this part of the game. Mark Records is taking that pan, is going underground and through the magma key. Not really a surprise. Uh, Dusty Griff is the one that's gone a little bit off the beaten path, but has been rewarded with it twice. Yep, there's an Excalibur. There's an Adamant Armor. No Cecil yet, but the Adamant Armor and, well, that Zeus Gauntlet's going to be nice too. Uh, if, if a little bit of strength is good, a lot of bit of strength is better. Uh, it's just going to keep chugging through. And this edge, while Micro Quartz is technically ahead right now, uh, Micro Quartz is objectively behind Dusty Griff because of that loot advantage at the moment. Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's not going to be apparent immediately, but later down the line when the bosses get a little bit tougher, you're going to see... Dusty Griff speed through them a lot easier. Two Zeus Gauntlets, yeah. You really want a, a Cecil at this point. I mean, X Gal, second Zeus Gauntlet. Hmm. Yeah, this is an extremely stacked Eblin, both in the trap chest and non trap chest. Uh, very high tier loot coming out uh, from all corners of Eblin. So. You know, personally, I'd have been burned pretty hard on this seed because, uh, again, the, the discussion of Tella versus, uh, you know, going watery versus Ebling Castle. Uh, I wouldn't have seen the need to, need to do this. And Dusty, I, you know, I think, again, I wonder if part of this was having been burned previously by Ebling Castle saying, I will not lose to this. I will get the loot here. Maybe this is also Dusty potentially adapting to the meta. Uh, I have not seen him run a ton this tournament uh, or seen him practice a ton, but I wonder if this is part of an adaptation on his part. Yeah, one of the things that Dusty has been known to do is practice a lot, but we may not have seen it, it, it but I wouldn't be surprised if he's taken a little bit of time just offline, just to familiarize himself with what was going on after his first loss. And that's one of the reasons why he's come back with such a big record so far. Yeah, absolutely agree. Dusty is uh, an amazing player, a student of the game. Um, and speaking of being a student of the game, Microcorgs being a man of the people and showing us a bank examiner for the job dwarf today. So uh, I'm not exactly certain what a bank examiner does, but it's it's a job that's on the list. Yeah. Um... I don't know how you can examine banks, but uh, maybe, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> the only thing, uh, the only thing I, I can think of isn't exactly um, legal to why you would want to examine banks, but uh, we won't go there. <laughs> yeah, a couple of schematics and some other things. I can't imagine what we're, yeah, yeah, I get your point, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Mokorgs, there's the pan check. Not really surprised. Just a couple of shop checks first, then over to the pan. That's an amazing item, Miss Sylph. Um, I suppose one of the tellers could use it. Yeah, that's a wizard shirt. Um, not worth the time to equip it, to be completely honest. I, I doubt unless we see that get equipped far down the line on a, a true white mage, I don't think that wizard shirt ever even gets equipped and it probably gets sold before equipped. Yeah, we're more than likely going to find a sorcerer robe or a white, uh, a white robe later down the line. So it feels a little bit unnecessary, but it's an item, it's money if you really want to sell it. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely agree. And we do see uh, Korg's now going through, and I believe he is still yet to defend Fabul. I think both of our runners have decided to uh, to fade Fabul to this point. So we're going to get a single dip Fabul for both runners, which I'm sure they are both going to be very happy to have. Uh, so we will have to wait on Sheila 1 and 2, the pan turnins, and we are going to see what is held behind Mylon and friends uh, for both of our runners 
a single flame here will happily take out all of the friends and it will just be Mylon proper that remains. Yeah. I'm not really surprised that they, they faded from all. That early hook sort of, of gave them a good reason to sort of stick around and do uh, and, um, and just wait a little bit for it because they might be able to get everything done at the same time and then with the magma key and that pan coming it's just sort of compounded that that yes leaving for ball was the right thing to do Yeah, absolutely. And we see one of the, the preeminent items of this tournament. I know that uh, Adam and Armors have been, uh, you know, everyone's favorite thing to this point. But Bacchus lines in the Fey March are probably the second most important things runners have been finding on a regular basis uh, because this is such a Zerker heavy flag set. Uh, also, we do see Fabul Defense giving a required adamant rock, uh, which is half of the forge. There's a twin harp and a legend sword. So Fabul and Orshila, uh, with the pan there, giving both halves of the forge, that is objective number five going to be complete for both our runners sooner than later. Yeah, and that does open the Kakul shop, which could be a fairly nice, nice set of items in there to buy. I, at, least a, at least a couple of tier six, maybe a tier seven an item in there. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, Poydrak, what's your feeling on Mom Bomb at Leviathan right now? Um, having seen it so much lately, um, I really don't want to comment on it. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a very fair take. Uh, that's a gross Mom Bomb. Thankfully for our runners, the queen spot is the objective, which is the Calbrena dolls. Uh, that mom bomb at the king spot, probably our runners are going to want to take both fights out at once and come back and do that later. Uh, but it looks like we do have Korgs going into Eblin Castle, so it is going to equalize that adamant armor advantage that Dusty has. Uh, I believe is still going to be slightly behind time-wise after this, but it's going to, to catch him up and alleviate one of the major issues, which was that huge loot disparity. Yeah. One, one of the things I do quickly want to come back to is those, those Barkus wines. I, yeah, no, the, that mom bomb um, sort of exemplifies this. This mom bomb is going to hit you fairly hard in those particular spots, uh, in that spot. And one of the best ways to do it is just give mom bomb as little chance to do that as possible and with a few berserkers hitting as quickly as possible oh yeah those barker swines are going to do really well the one thing that barker swines have been in this in this tournament i feel is very scarce and it you really feel it when you don't have them Luckily, yeah, it's not the case here, but it has been a, a point of concern for a lot of runners. Yeah, because the, the three sources of Zerk being either White Mages, Bacchus Wines, or Avengers, uh, Avengers are by far the rarest of those three to find. White Mages are the most common. But the problem with using White Mages for Berserk, of course, is then you can't blink, you can't cure, you're dedicating singular turns uh, to casting Berserk, and it can open up your party to a lot of other concerns. So finding those Bacchus is enormous for, for our runners, just to be able to take care of uh, you know, potential Zerk targets. Mom Bomb especially is one where, because of the HP dip, where you only have to deal, I think it's like two thirds or 70% of Mom Bomb's health, something like that, before it goes into the explode phase, you may even be able to do that extra nine or 10,000 on top before Mom Bomb can explode. And that would be huge for the runners as well, just by jamming that Q and dealing that damage. Uh, and while Korgs is going through this Eblin Castle, looks like Dusty Griff is going to hit the forge. Uh, this makes a ton of sense. It is a required objective. It opens up arguably the best shop in the game. Uh, and we'll see where Dusty goes from here as Korgs now does have that adamant armor and says, I am out of here. Uh, I have an Excal, I have an Adam in armor. Let's go play around with the rest of the season. 
Yeah, they'd also pick up one of those, uh, one of the two Zeus gauntlets in Castle Weblin. So he is ready and raring. And having not done that last uh, trap chest, does has made up a little bit of time on Dusty Griff because of that. So not too bad. Yeah, going to be down a Zeus gauntlet and a white shirt, but ultimately when you're looking at uh, a potential Excal, uh, you know, Adamant Cecil versus whatever the alternative is, a white shirt pales in comparison to anything that could be potentially comparable. Uh, yeah. and, let me tell you about why, things why that... find, um, why, <laughs> Yeah, why find a Zeus gauntlet when you can buy them in Kakao anyway? That's also true. Uh, and let me tell you about things that adamant armors are helpful against. Evil Wall here stinks. Uh, this is a really rude, punchy spot for an Evil Wall. Uh, that adamant armor is going to save hundreds upon hundreds of damage per hit should the wearer be, uh, be attacked here. So... That adamant armor going to pay huge dividends for our runners here. Yeah, one issue with Michael Cox's edge right now is he has one Murasame, no other weapon. So edge is just swinging one sword. Yeah, this is going to be the edge show. Um, <laughs> and yeah, probably but, no one else um, is alive after this, slowly. Yeah, it, <laughs> it's... 800 isn't bad for one sword, but you really want that second to boost that up to um, almost 2,000. Yeah, we see on Korg's side, 1,400. Also a little bit better RNG on Korg's side, the opening hit going on that adamant edge, as opposed to Tell is just getting knocked off before they can Zerk the edge. Uh, finally, a Zerk comes out for, for Korg's, but Dusty is going to be... If not through this fight faster, it's going to be really close because that's 2,800 from that edge. It's only going to be a couple hits. And yeah, Dusty is actually through that evil wall before Korg's is. So already uh, made up that time. So Dusty now up uh, picking up those Bacchus from Fey March and up the Forge. So has recouped a little bit of time there by Korg's not having that second, uh, second weapon on his edge. Yeah. There's uh, there's Rydia, and there's our Mylon Z. Not take, being taken today, though. Even though we've seen a Leviathan, the, apparently our runners are saying two tellers is better than a Rydia. Yeah, I mean, our, our runners have an anchor, an anchor, an anchor. Rydia is an anchor and edge. That's kind of how this party is turning out right now, is that you have literally four characters plus that Edward that was floating around, none of whom you want in your endgame. Maybe a Tello or a Rydia or a Citizen Anchor, but Edge is the only long-term viable damage-dealing character on this entire squad right now. Yeah, I've, I've said it a few times. I'm, I'll, the people in this tournament know what sort of complement and their final team is wanting to be. They're aiming for that. Rydia is great if you get her early and get her set up early. However, uh, she's not going to be one of the final team. And you're going to have one anchor, you're going to have a load of hitters and a white mage. Yeah. That That's the team that you're looking for. If there was a fifth spot, maybe that video would be there. But without that, um, because we're limited to four, your choices are very, very tight. Now, I will say to add to that, for, for the Rydia fans out there, the Palom fans, the Porum fans, and the fans of mages in general, uh, one of these runners is going to be making brackets today based off the result of this race. You will see a ton more mages in brackets. Uh, when the loot oh, yeah. settings come down, the mage usage goes way up. It is just the natural balance of the game. Uh, so do not be surprised if Rydia becomes a hyper popular pick or Palom becomes a hyper popular pick where they have been very unpopular in the group stage. So it's, it's an entirely different ball of wax, uh, but exciting nonetheless, just a different type of excitement. Yeah, and if it's, uh, if it's been anything like the uh, some of the practice seeds I've seen, I mean, you're going to be in a lot more tight situations 
not only because of the gear, but because of the, because two of the characters are missing. So those 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 mages might just appear much more often, and you've got to make do with them. And even on top of that, Cell Quarter is on, and that makes it much more difficult to finance berserkers, whereas mages largely don't need equipment. They just need a, a ton of levels. Uh, we see Korg's leaving a save outside a tower here, going to peak the Sand Ruby character. Uh, I don't believe we've had eyes on this yet, so if this is a Cecil uh, or a Fusoya, this could be a huge turning point for, for Korg's here. Uh, that is a small child and not one that Korg's wants in his party. So I, I like this play from Korg's. It didn't pay out, but I think it's a very smooth play to save scum that sand will be. Yeah, uh, it, if Cecil hadn't had been there, uh, Excal Cecil or, and, an, and an Edge would probably put him above Dusty Griff at this particular point. I mean, just because Dusty doesn't have the a Cecil, same with Fu, Fu, but seeing one of the twins in there, you if you're not going to pick up, up Riddier at this point, you're not really going to pick up as Palum likely, and Borum would be helpful, but then you'd have to uh, then go back underground where the tower is, save again, so it, it was really a check if it's one of the big hitters and then reset if it's not. Yeah, it, it's one of those where it's not an impactful enough change, nor is it a character that, again, you really want in your endgame party. So, like, trading out one bad character, and I, I don't mean bad as in has no use at all ever, I mean bad as in doesn't fit the meta, if you will. Trading out one bad character for another, it's just a waste of time, and in Korg's position, knowing who he's against, we all fear Dusty Griff, not because he's terrifying or scary, but he is exceptionally precise and good at this game. You can't afford to waste any time. And swapping out subpar characters for subpar characters is, without mincing words, just a waste of time. Yeah, and you have, you have to be fast. fast. And let's not all take make it away from Michael. yes he's going to be thinking about that on dusty's side but dusty is also going to be thinking about that on microcork's side as well because microcorks is really good as well really precise really quick so you're going to see a lot of of a lot of those, those checks x's if it's not right reset and go uh, go back and, and move on again move on to the next one yeah absolutely and speaking of moving on to the next one dusty is going to be moving on to his next objective uh going to be turning in that rat tail i would assume sooner than later as that rat tail is a required objective from this ruby uh cords i, I believe that was an 8400 damage hit there uh with an ice claw good night to ruby as well picking up his rat tail uh, so right now, Korgs is behind a white shirt, a little bit of looting in Eblin, some Bacchus wine, I think, and a super cannon check. But realistically, that might be 60 seconds at most two minutes. Uh, this is still a very close race, uh, and certainly by no means over. That adamant armor pickup really equalized things for Korg, so I'm very happy he did the Eblin play as well. Yeah, and we're just about to see what the Dark Knight Cecil was, was hiding behind the super cannon. And that might tell us a bit more about where Dusty is going, if it's not the rat tail. Well, that's probably going to lead him towards the rat tail, but hey, uh, Amasa's Amasa, and... With our runners having an edge and no Cecil, that's a, a happy little find for them. Uh, that could also potentially drive our runners back to the Fey March. Maybe they feel they have the damage now to clear out both spots. Obviously, the dolls are still a little troublesome for this party, 
but with hourglasses, they're going to melt fairly quickly. Or we just find the darkness crystal from the rat tail. And now we are, what, exactly an earth crystal from go mode. I wonder if we see Dusty kick his norm, which is never moon, and go moon earlier than we would expect. I honestly don't think so. We've got enough on the uh, Earth that we can still do. Oh, the, as you said, the dolls with hourglasses isn't that difficult. But we've got an adamant armor, so that mum bomb is nowhere near as much of a, uh, and Barker Swine, so that mum, mum bomb is nowhere near as big a threat as she once was. So Feymarsh is calling. And um, so we could seize that, and that could just keep our runners on the earth a little bit longer if there's another chain behind it. Because it's just yeah, one key item we're needing. And meanwhile, we do see a Porum coming on board for Dusty instead of a Tella. Uh, this, this is, I'm speculating a, I don't have a Rosa or access to a Rosa. I'd like a dedicated white mage. And Tella may become the anchor now with Sid as supplementary DPS. Uh, a very odd statement to be making in this flag set because it's not something that happens very often. But here we go. Dusty is, if nothing else, launching the whale here, maybe for a shopping character check. May even feel confident enough to go play with uh, whatever's up on the moon. But hot on his heels, here is Micro Korgs. Our runners are within a couple seconds of each other uh, at this point, yeah. launching the whale. Yeah. I've... If this is Rosa up on the... on the moon, on or Fu, uh, that little bit of time that Dusty Griff did to take that pull on might backfire a little bit. Yeah, because that will bring microcorps right back on um, on the hills so yeah he's really going to have to hope that this is another uh, heavy hitter such as kane or cecil or even yarn yeah if this is cecil in particular this is going to be a very interesting moment for our runners because both of them will effectively end up in a situation where they go from having a decent party to an objectively good endgame party just with the acquisition of one character. Uh, and we actually see Dusty do a little shopping and is headed back underground, so not even checking the character or the shop on the moon. Uh, might be heading to Feymarch to clear it out now, and it looks like that is his direction. So gonna be dolls first for sure, and then we'll see about the mom bomb later as sirens do appear in the lunar shop so if korgs also decides to go back down to the earth after this he is going to have sirens now to do a little bit of grind before the moon if he wants them i don't think he's going to oh mostly because he's got hourglasses he's got sirens he's got a teller that sets you up very nicely for just doing a couple of king ryu fights and getting levels on whoever is here, your edge, and maybe Sid. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Uh, it, it would set you up very well for those gold dragons and get you 180,000 a clip with, uh, with a life glitch there. That would be huge news. That is that Rosa. So that is, uh, that's that small time punishment you were talking about, picking up that Porum from the Sand Ruby for Dusty. Rosa is, you know, sorry, Porum fans. Rosa's just better. <laughs> you stay on the moon. Um, Mike, of course, is staying on the moon. Mostly because 10 key items, sirens, hourglasses, a Rosa you really want levels on. He's staying on the moon. He's going to finish up this moon and while Dusty Griff is going to take on the Fate March. Yeah, and I don't think there's a wrong play here. I think both runners are doing what they're comfortable with. Um, and we shall see how it turns out. We know that, and, and Micro Korgs is going to know his opponent as well, and Dusty Griff vice versa. I, I think with Korgs, he's probably thinking Dusty's going to go Earth first. Because that is historically what Dusty Griff does. 
And so if Korgs is thinking that and he says, well, in a foot race, maybe I'm a minute slower than Dusty. Now, in this case, he's three seconds ahead or, you know, they're basically dead even. Uh, Korgs might just be making the counterplay that says, I'll go to the moon and if the value is here, I win. And if it's not, I lose and I can live with that. So that'll be an interesting uh, question to ask Korgs after this uh, this match as well. Yeah, Dusty Griff has a brand. He he doesn't usually stray from that brand. So he's, he's a little bit predictable in some ways, but it's not something that you're going to really just say he's going to do all the time. Right. He, no he, one is a hundred percent predictable. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he does deviate from it a few times, but it's he know he knows what he's planning on doing. So let me ask you this, Poydrak. We see a package coming from the the Queen of Summon Monsters spot there. If the package is a Cecil, are you sitting through the package? Honestly, if it was a crystal sword I had, not an XL, maybe. But at this stage, at 50 minutes in, I'd, I'd be more hesitant to say, uh, more more likely to say no. You've got an edge with Mazamune, Murasame, Adam and Palmer, Zeus Gornlet. He's going to do a whole lot of work. Cecil can do it, but mm, at this point, it's difficult to say yes. Yeah, it's a very tough one. I don't know the right answer to it. That's why I wanted to make you take a shot at it first. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's a really tough one. Uh, yeah, but... I, would, I would have to say no, but uh, there's a lot of runners out there who will just take the Cecil and eat the time. It's yeah. not a whole lot. It's something like three minutes, and you can get that back fairly easily with a little bit of... of careful manipulation of your fights <sighs> but you you're you're absolutely right there there is no particularly wrong answer to that yes you can and you've got a well balanced team you don't need him but he's helpful yeah absolutely so it looks like we got one siren uh we're getting a second siren for microcorg so doing a little bit of a gold dragon grind here uh dusty does have that objective number seven complete though defeating the town of monsters uh but we shall see who ends up progressing here and who ends up uh making their way through the moon a little bit better i do believe that dusty still has a gear advantage albeit a small one by virtue of uh, a second zeus gauntlet i think i don't believe korg's bought one uh for his sid uh, and also, I think a better second weapon, though that may have been negated by uh, the Masamune that was picked up, where I think both are now Masamura. Yeah, they are both Ma Masamura. And honestly, a Zeus Gauntlet, even in the hands of Sid, doesn't really change the, that equation too much. So I really feel that it's it's quite even at this point. I mean, the, the big difference is course has got a few more levels on Rosa so far. Dusty Griff has done that one extra objective. Yeah, and uh, as chat points out, Jay Mac, uh, our tracker again pointing out, uh, there is that white shirt for uh, Dusty Griff's white mage Rosa here. So again, that gear advantage, pretty nice. Uh, Korg's opts to take two gold dragon fights, but that is 360,000 XP. That is equivalent to basically the ribbon room, the white spear altar, and the Ogo Pogo spot uh, through two fights. So Dusty now going to join him uh, in taking on these gold dragons. A slight difference here though, Tella is not in the middle slot and we are getting a Berserk cast from Tella here as opposed to attempting to go with the weak. Uh, that's a little unfortunate because these gold dragons in the back row have very meaningful physical defense. So it's a little bit of an awkward situation that Dusty's going to find himself in with these gold dragons. So quite a bit cleaner uh, of a gold dragon fight from Korgs. And oh my heavens, a good thing he grinded because turtles are jerks on the moon. 
Also, welcome in Free Enterprise uh, with the raiding party of 69 raiders. Welcome on in. No spoils from your race, please, as there are, I'm sure, a number of folks who would want to go back and watch that race. Uh, but thank you for coming on in to uh, this wonderful race between Dusty Griff and Microcorgs, battling it out for first place in their group here on RPG Limit Break. Story of the seed so far is our runners have basically been neck and neck. Like, uh, you know, the leaders changed a couple of times, but no one's got a really meaningful advantage. Uh, the Calbrenner dolls are our boss at the Queen of Town of Monsters. Everything else has been found apart from the Earth Crystal. Oh, and finally, we've got Odin at the bottom of the hook, hook route, so that's going to be taken out eventually. Yeah, and I will say I do like Dusty's routing here ever so slightly better, simply because now he can do the Crystal Sword Altar first and then head back to complete the other three altars at the bottom of the moon. Whereas what Korgs is going to be presented with is a situation where he completes the White Spear Altar and then has to make the awkward choice of going after his objective or going after the D-Lunar and the Ogopogo spot. So a slight potential time give back on Korg's side, uh, though one that ultimately won't matter if the Earth Crystal is not actually up here. Uh, well, there's Golbez, though, at the Crystal Sword <laughs> Altar, so maybe not as bad a play as we may have initially thought. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Um, required laughter. Um, <laughs> Golbez here. It's not. It's not bad. The magic in this area, uh, this spot, is pitiful, to be perfectly honest. But it's still a long fight. Speaking of long fights, <laughs> Bygen in the in the ribbon room is just obnoxious. Yeah, that's uh, that's what thirty six thousand health on the body and. 3,000 each on the arms. This is actually the type of fight that's awkward enough. It could wipe a party here, even with an edge with adamant armors, because of the exploding arms at the end uh, and the vampires that can come out. This is a really weird spot that our runners find themselves in uh, because Bygen actually presents a potential problem, even for adamant wearing, uh, you know, overpowered edges. Yeah, and Berserk doesn't help as much as you might think because you ha gained, you lose control of your character and that character may just attack arms. Yeah, we, we talk jokingly about doing an arm grind on Bygen. Uh, Edge is skipping leg day entirely and just going after these arms over and over, only getting two body shots in before the arms are repopulating each time. So it's going to take a long time to get through this if he just keeps attacking the arms, which he, he is wont to do right now. Uh, while Dusty Griff prepared his party well, uh, minying, pigging uh, his party, and then of course Edge with the adamant armor to get through this gold bez. So very well set up by Dusty here. Uh, we'll see if uh, if he can progress through the rest of the checks just as quickly uh, as Korgs does have a small bit of a level advantage now, having done two gold dragon fights instead of one. Yeah, but no, as you said, uh, it might come down to the routing of Crystal Sword uh, Altar first over mm -hmm. the White Spear Altar first. If if this is the Earth Crystal here at the, at the Crystal Sword Altar that puts the advantage much more in Dusty's favor. Very much so agree, yeah. If the Earth Crystal is here behind Golbez, uh, it's it's just bad news for Microcorgs. So for his sake, uh, you know, he needs the Earth Crystal to not be behind this Golbez. For Dusty, if the Earth Crystal is here, that's probably the inside track to victory at this point. Uh, we did see a spoon come from that Bygen, and we see a pink tail come from the Crystal Sword Altar. So the Earth Crystal is still out there. Could be behind the Luka Key that came from that White Spear Altar. And I do wonder if we might get some sort of cheeky check or cheeky uh, save scum on a Luka Key if our, our runners are feeling behind or not. Possibly from my folks, since... We're only looking for that one key item, so that it might come 
after the Crystal Sword Altar by Microcorps. Dusty, I think, is going to complete the moon I mean, at this stage because he's only got reason to go down to the Earth for the Earth Crystal. He doesn't have any real reason outside of that. He's done the Queen of the Sound of Monsters. So, oh, there, there's the launch of the Falcon, so you do have to go down for that as well. Yeah. But they're two objectives that you can do in a row, really. Yeah, and I, I will say a uh, huge shout out to our behind the scenes uh, restreamer today, Scarlet Kitty. Uh, one of the most wonderful people, if not the most wonderful person in the free enterprise community, uh, giving us Antlion in its natural habitat on the moon. Uh, we also get to see a, a Kamikaze from Sid. That's, uh, <laughs> I guess, a way to push some extra damage. We see a lot of darts coming out here. Uh, yeah, that's that's Antline on the moon, Kainatso on the moon, Baigan on the moon, Golbez on the moon. That's a four-pack of bosses on the moon that I generally want no part of. So job well done testing our runners today uh, from Scala Kitty. Yeah. Be interesting to see what our last one is. A lot of the other big bosses are out, but there are still a few waiting in the wings. Yeah, and it looks like uh, we have both runners progressing here. Uh, Dusty finding a little bit of time here to manipulate and maneuver through his inventory uh, between attacks, taking good advantage of the text boxes for Kainatsa, while Korgs took great advantage of darting there, darted an Excal, darted a Spoon, uh, made pretty quick work of that antline, uh, and decides I would like my darts back because a White Spear is an inferior dart and I don't need the XP. Off he goes. So... The Earth Crystal is either behind Luca or some other yet-to-be-seen spot. Uh, I'm really wondering if that Luca key becomes a, a spy for one of our runners. Or, as Chad is pointing out, both runners faded Twin Harp, which I'm on board with that. But <laughs> it's a tough sell this tournament, as Twin Harp is so often required. Yeah, and we still do have that mum bomb uh, at the Leviathan spot hanging, and I honestly think if that's the if that's the place, Dusty's at a sort of disadvantage because I don't think he's going back there until very last. I would agree with that. Having done the there. Yeah. yeah, having done the queen spot, it, it, that's his last location. We still do have a number of spots still to go, though. Uh, we still do have a Baron in, in uh, a Baron Castle that can be found, uh, the Baron, in, Baron Key. We still do have the Murasame Altar and Cave Value. So there's still a lot out there. It's just a matter of which one. Yeah, there's uh, quite a few spots that remain. It's going to be who picks the right one, which <laughs> I, I know that sounds quite silly, but uh, that's what these races between runners of similar caliber often comes down to, is just simply who guesses correctly. Uh, and it's to no fault of anyone's own if they guess incorrectly. That's, that's just rando gonna rando. So we shall see how it turns out, but it has been a heck of an exciting run so far. And if y'all haven't already, please make sure you give our runners a follow because they are putting on a heck of a show for you this evening. Uh, again, Dusty Griff and Micro Korgs, if you're a member of the Free Enterprise community, you already know them. But if you're not, these are two incredibly well-experienced, incredibly good runners uh, that you should definitely show your love to. Uh, and while you're at it, Give some love to Scala Kitty behind the scenes for rolling and restreaming this uh, this wonderful race. J Mac for tracking and my co-commentator, the Poison Dragon himself, Poidrak. Make sure to give everyone a follow and show them your love. Well, you can't really forget the other person on this particular commentary side. There is the possum um, over to my side here. He is a man of many talents. So yeah, give him a follow as well. He does a whole lot of things and it's usually good at them all um, good at them all yeah
And yeah, if you ever need expert advice on how to berserk a D-machine and have it wipe you during your grind, I can be your expert on that too. <laughs> I have to try that sometimes. Might yeah, be good. <laughs> I would I would highly recommend not. <laughs> uh, but we do see here uh, Korgs is now up the Ogo Pogo spot on Dusty Griff, but down the dolls. So this is pretty much a match race at this point. Um, our runners are basically dead even. It's just a matter of, uh, again, where is that Earth Crystal hiding? Korgs is likely to clear out the entire Fey March when he goes. If the Earth Crystal is at that bomb bomb, it's really bad for Dusty Griff. If the Earth Crystal is somewhere else, it's good for Dusty Griff. Because uh, Micro Korgs, when he finishes this moon, I have to imagine it's going to be launch the Falcon. And then from the Falcon, after completing that, going down to the Fey March and completing those two spots and then probably checking Luca at the same time as well. I think that would route in smoothly for him. For Dusty, it's a little more of a routing decision that he has to make. And I'm curious what he opts to do afterwards. It could be a little bit similar, but there's a lot more hesitant. Uh, uh, it's, it's a little bit more hesitant on Dusty's side because he's already been to a couple of those locations once or twice. Yes, that uh, launch to Falcon is likely going to be the first thing after the moon. But from there, it might be just straight to Luca rather than back to the Fey Marsh. Yeah, I could definitely see that being his, his path. And that's, of course, assuming we don't find the Earth Crystal at either the Murasame spot that Microcorgs is clearing out, or Cave Bahamut, should our runners make a stop there. Uh, and we do see just, I say just another Masamune, um, but it's it's not a requirement. And in fact, uh, I wonder if some folks might even reset out of it, thinking Masamura is just good enough. But Korgs, I think, also taking the XP here, not having power overwhelming, kind of having for this flag set power medium, uh, might just say I want those extra levels, and I'll take the sword as a gift. Yeah, and there's not really too much difference between resetting out of that after the fa after seeing the key item and resetting and loading back in. Um, sorry, uh, uh, exiting out 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 on, and resetting and loading back in. There's not a whole lot of difference, so you can just say I'll just keep it and go. Yeah, absolutely. And we see Dusty heading into that Murasame altar, uh, Korg's heading down to Value Cave, so we'll get our first peek at what's at Cave Bahamut. Uh, again, the, the gap is remaining very similar between the two runners, which is to be expected. They're both incredibly good at this game. Uh, that is a Magus Sisters fight. Do we have a Mute Knife still? I don't believe we have a mutant knife in this particular seed so far. Um, not really. You know, I don't think it's going to be too dangerous for the edge. The the hits from Cindy are going to be a lot worse than the spells from Mindy, especially, especially if they the go on edge. <laughs> yeah, uh, and Mindy in this spot doesn't have a whole lot out of. HP, so you're not, not going to really see the virus, which could be dangerous from her. Cindy is much, much more the dangerous one because this spot is a, does have a very high damage edge amount uh, and a, a lot of strength. So it, it hits will hit hard. Case in point, 80 on an adamant armor edge. Yeah, big damage potential from Cindy, but the sister's playing nice, to be completely honest, and they keep zapping Edge uh, instead of zapping uh, other folks who could actually take damage. The kind of scary part here, though, is that that Edge is spreading damage evenly, which means that none of the sisters are dying. So while he's getting lucky not taking any, you know, ice spells, fire spells, lit spells, they are eating time with animations. So, <laughs> thankfully, Mindy goes down just before the virus would have come out. I think that was the last attack before virus. So, should be through now, but uh, 
a little bit of time lost, I think, there due to the extra animations. Yeah. And with Cindy being the only one, um, she's likely going to hit once before queuing up a revive. So you've got plenty of time to take Cindy down to finish that fight up, which Mike, of course, has done handedly and gets a ribbon. Yeah, so ribbon, not what you want, but uh, well, Korg's... Uh, I, I'm actually a little bit disappointed in, in the team. You just beat up a, a bunch of girls and stole their ribbon. <laughs> very, very well pointed out, Poor Drag. I didn't even think about that. But to be fair, the, the girls took the first action on the team, right? They, they would have off the team if they had the chance. So it, it's it's just desserts in the end, right? No, probably not. Okay, no. I guess I'm the bad one here. <laughs> well, naturally. But we do have, <laughs> we have Gorgs heading back down here. Uh, we'll see what he opts to do if he wants to go the route of the, the launch the Falcon or something different. Um, probably. Power well. of this stage sort of tells me he launched the Falcon and also the way, oh. way he's going. And there, there's, there's a, sec a second Adam and Tom waiting. You're going to be picking up the hovercraft to do the, the Falcon. You might as well just do all of these at the same time. And I do wonder there, we saw him move down in the inventory and he did cross over that Twin Harp. This is proximity-wise the closest he's going to be to that Twin Harp at any point, but it's been a fade he's made the entire time. Do we think we get music? No. Honestly, <laughs> a, the, the movement of the, the movement of the hovercraft here means you're going to land next to it. You're going to go and do this. Yeah, yeah. I, I, is not going to happen, and it it's too long a check for them to take a risk on it at this stage. Yeah, I I agree with that. That as much as I know, Chat would love music. That Xenocat wants to show off uh, their songs and and Calamity songs, etc. It's not the right check at this moment. It would certainly have been defensible and very logical to do before the moon if you were sticking to Team Earth. Uh, but it doesn't make a ton of sense to do now, especially with the, the plays that Korgs has made. He faded that Queen of Summon Monster spot. He faded the Twin Harp. He faded the King of Summon Monsters, faded Luca, or no, excuse me, picked up Luca. So a lot, a couple of fades on Korgs aside, and I think this just plays into his game plan of trying to minimize double and triple trips to various locations. So Korg's now halfway down this hook route while Dusty Griff finishing up Cave Bahamut. Uh, gonna be, again, really close here. Still impossible to predict who's ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that might have swung Angit on in the Twin Harp's favor might have been if they found the Baron Key and landed there uh, to do that. Uh, because now that they've been, to the, uh, been into the hovercraft, been to the moon and back, like, there is the Black Chocobo in the forest next to Baron. They could have used that to get to the Twin Harp. So that was a possibility. A, but we haven't got that Baron key, so that sort of took it away as well. Yeah, absolutely makes sense. A, a Baron key would have been a driver potentially for other overworld checks. Uh, we don't have a Thunderclaw uh, that has been spotted, at least for Korgs. I don't think Dusty has one either. Uh, but we have Vanilla in the form of King Queen Eblin. Oh, baby. Uh, this, this fight, I don't know if our runners can get through it. This is a tough one. Edge is just looking at them and going, I have to deal with this again. Mom! Dad! Go home! Where exactly is home other than Eblin? Also, 2940? Really? There's 3,000 health on the Queen. That feels bad. That's a lot of extra animation for no reason. <laughs> yeah, thank the uh, thank Edge not being back road for that. <laughs> but now for some fun. This Odin will not be a problem for either of our runners at this point. Uh, going to just be 
Zerk and Odin falls over. Xantetsukin will not be able to kill anyone in this party except Tella. So our runner is really not going to be caring too, too much about what happens here. So yeah, Edge going to be uh, really taking it home here. And Xantetsukin again will do no damage. I'm... I've just realized the southern part of the uh, map today has been very regal-like. We had the Queen a, a queen of Summer Monsters in this, the first spot, part of all deals. We had the King in the back tax spot. We've had the queen and, uh, King and Queen of Eblen down here and the King of Baron down here. No, that's true. That is a lot of royalty that has been uh, popping up. Uh, this part of the the map. Yeah. So hmm. it's it's fairly you know, fairly close together. They must have just been leaving in from a convention and got lost. All right. So where are the royalty hiding the earth crystal then? <laughs> Let's play a game of Clue. Honestly, I'm, I'm saying it Twin could Harp be anywhere. Point. Yeah. It, it all comes back, back to where um, the randomness. What, what check is it? And that's that's been the big teller of this entire tournament. And it's it's not been clear cut. Uh, there's been a lot of back and forth for ju maybe just one or two key items. Yeah, um, you can't just say. I've, I'm going to go there because that might not be it. It's the same with if gear, um, gear and equipment as well. Oh, you, your, you might do one check while no, your opponent does another, and it might pan out for you. It might pan out for your opponent. There's no way of telling. Yeah, absolutely. And we we do have, you know, like you said, a number of races decided by that. We in this race alone have been, what, 30 minutes from go mode, one single key item the entire time, and that Earth Crystal just not presenting itself. So that's that's the story of this race as it has been so many others. Um, but we do see Korg's going. I didn't even realize Korg's never picked up the Famarch freebie, uh, <laughs> but apparently never did. So that is, uh, ooh, that's an extra Artemis bow for him, but that could have been uh, a huge weight removed off his shoulders seeing that. Uh, going one to be thing taking he on... Yeah, one thing he isn't checking is the shop, and this shop has the Bacchus wine. That's true, yeah, the Bacchus were here. Uh, I, I wasn't sure if I had remembered Korg's doing this or not, so that is very interesting, but coming down here, taking on these dolls, we are going to be basically time and objective neutral uh, once Korgs finishes these dolls. And then that, that kind of push and pull of where is that Earth Crystal really comes into full effect because I think we're both in agreement. There's basically a 0% chance that Dusty's going right for this Mamba. In our opinion, yeah. Dusty <laughs> is his own person. He will True. make his own decisions. But if we know the the runner as as we've seen him, it's very unlikely. And so we are going to have Dusty Griff here with the launch the Falcon objective being completed, uh, objective number four. So Dusty now just complete the Tower of Zot away. Uh, we need a swing here from Edge. Okay, and there's the queen spot down. So this is objective number seven for Korgs. We are basically in a dead heat y'all. And we have Dusty Griff going to Luca. And we yeah, have yes, Korgs we going to Mombom. And here's possibly the game uh, because this Mombom will set Korgs behind if it doesn't have it. This Luka key will set Dusty Griff behind if it doesn't have it. Uh, it yeah. We are running <laughs> very low on checks, so so what we've got these two, and one will be leading to the Baron key, one to the Earth Crystal, if they don't leave to each other. 
Well, they could both end up leading to nothing, and the Twin Harp could have the Baron Key, which has the Earth Crystal and the Pass. <laughs> That's true. We, ha uh, we haven't seen in, in what's behind that Twin Harp and, yet. And that would be the highest of drama, because if both of these zonk, there's a good chance they cross paths with each other. And they do the yeah. opposite check here, both being underground already, and then both end up doing the same things overworld. Well, let's see what the microcorgs is bringing up. The pass. So that's <laughs> that's actually probably bad news for Dusty as well, because yeah. even if this is an Earth crystal now, he's got to walk the moon, and Korgs wouldn't. So I think this puts puts Dusty on a clock. Baron Key is. Dusty Dusty is not liking that. Uh, <laughs> I, yes, we can't see him, but honestly, at this stage, when with so many checks not really hitting, you are worried. Every wrong key item that you pick up affects your mindset. You're thinking, Oh, how far behind am I now? Yeah, it, it, it definitely it, weighs on you. Yeah. Val here is, isn't as bad as you might think, right? because I, I believe there's no physical evade here at all on this particular spot, so that's fine. But you still got to get out afterwards, and unless... <laughs> Yeah, Teller's got warp, so that will get a little bit quicker, but you still got to walk out. Yeah, it's... And you cannot, under any circumstance, reset out of the Baron Key here. This is a 100% auto-take every time. Uh, you're, both runners have faded the harp for an hour plus at this point. Uh, they're, they're not going to touch the harp until probably post-Baron. Um, but that pass, again, looming very large, I just don't see the world where Dusty goes back for that now, because Earth is going to have to be through the Twin Harper Baron. By picking up Baron, it's going to place Dusty on the overworld, which means he's going to be near the harp, even if it is what's required. I just don't see a world where Dusty ever gets back to the pass, and that makes for some very high drama. Yeah. This is this is going to be his only opportunity. This is going to be his the only time he's going to be close enough to Mom Bomb to go we'll do right it. Now. If he goes up, yeah, he's going up. He's not going to have that pass. He's going to find the Earth Crystal before. Oh, 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 no, going back to Mom Bomb. So he's going to be in go mode before that. So he's not going to find it at all. Yeah, the, the only world in which that happens is he runs out of Bacchus wine and decides that he needs Bacchus for this Aromas fight. Knowing by exhausting every other check that Bomb Bomb would have to have the pass. But even uh, that, I, is it I, worth I don't getting see, Bacchus? I don't, <laughs> I don't see you. Uh, uh, I don't see it being worth going yeah. back down uh, into the underworld through for a marsh to get Barkus Wine when you've got a perfectly capable Rosa on your team. Yeah. And so as Chad is pointing out, Dusty will get to go mode first, almost certainly. But there is now a, what is it, a two minute difference that the pass gives you? Something like that? I, I, that. Uh, it, uh, <laughs> I think it might be closer to three minutes, okay. but it, it's somewhere in the vicinity. It's going to be extraordinarily close. <laughs> uh, I think Korgs has a slight edge, but we absolutely have ourselves a race, y'all. Also, we have a 4200 HP Sid, and I love to see that. <laughs> it It's already going to come down to how quickly can you get through these fights, uh, these final remaining fights. Are there going to be any surprises? I don't think anything is going to be strong enough to defeat your team in any of the spots here. It's really a matter of execution, getting through the fights as quickly as possible. Well, Wyvern, have we seen Wyvern yet? No. So Wyvern at Baron Basement, should it be required, 
or Wyvern at Zot 2. Wyvern can wipe you at either one of those if you're not prepared. Uh, that's the only potential trip up that I can see for either runner here. Also, shout outs to Dusty Griff using the Kamikaze to crumble skip, saving roughly eight seconds there. And in a race this tight, uh, that eight seconds could matter a lot. <laughs> Absolutely, especially since we know what Dusty is going to be up against in the long run, which is going to be a moonwalk versus not a moonwalk. Yeah. But this is uh, this is a big moment of truth here. Uh, do we need a basement check? or do we go straight to Zot? That is the Earth Crystal. So Dusty is in a go mode as the Earth Crystal pops out. Korgs is behind two fights, but it is two fairly easy fights. Uh, now, Dusty Griff not having the pass does not have flying concerns. When Korgs lands up in Troya, there is going to be the falcon that's going to be sitting there korgs will have to make some small airship arrangements he will have to make some small possible swag chocobo arrangements uh but something will have to to be done to give a tiny bit of time back to dusty here which dusty needs at this point we will see i a, a... This Optimam is going a little bit slower. No, this, no, as as you said, the, the crumble skip done by Dusty definitely is going to play a little bit more in his part, but it's not really too much at this point. Hope and we'll see what happens. And it's all down to now. Yeah, that pass. That pass is going to be the big, big telling point at this stage. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like Dusty doing a little bit of party rearrangement here uh, before getting the dimps. Uh, I do believe he has some coffins left, so I think he can just uh, kind of scatter shot coffins here. Uh, just looks like we're going to get a Bacchus and probably just going to bop them uh, bop them down. Yeah, Edge is going to one shot each one of them. Um, so, uh, so it's pretty much a coffin with a little bit less animation. Yeah. And so meanwhile, we have Korgs, who is picking up the Earth Crystal here. Uh, I reckon he's about 90 seconds behind, but up the pass. And so oh. here goes Korgs, smartly taking the Chocobo now, so that when he lands back in Baron, he can then take his airship straight up to Zot. So that's a fantastic bit of awareness, that when you're this deep in a race, Having race brain just leave you a little out of focus can definitely happen. That's very smart, and it's not even swag. That's just smart. Yeah, we're also going to see one of the very rare instances where our our airships are going to be transposed because where he's left the Falcon, the Enterprise is going to be right there as well. <laughs> so take your guesses on which one is, is he's going to get into. Uh, let's go with a, a second Swag Chocobo. <laughs> but yeah, we have uh, Dusty Griff going and uh, deciding he is going to run with a Cecil. Uh, bopping a Sid. I think he might have been intending to hit Cecil there and keep Cecil as an anchor, or maybe just trying to knock down Sid. Not exactly certain. There we go. Yeah, just using a Cecil as an anchor, and we're going to get uh, an alt gauntlet here. This is not what our runners want to see an hour and 25 minutes into a seed up against someone else who is also extremely good uh, without a great choice for a black mage. Like, Edge has to be your black mage here, and that's just awkward. Yeah, but most of the enemies here are weak to fire, so Flame is going to just do just fine. Yeah, Flame doing a lot of work here, especially with an adamant armor on, uh, going to be more than sufficient to take out all of the enemies in this gauntlet. So 
Yeah, this is oof, extraordinarily close still. I think Dusty made it through by zerking against the dimps slightly faster than the coffins from Korgs, to your point about the animations. Uh, yeah, I, I still don't know, I, chat. I have no idea who's going to win this. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the uh, one of the things that might come back to bite Dusty is that little bit of time to knock off the Cecil at the very start, taking that couple of swings at Sid, not doing nearly enough damage because Sid's just got so beefy at this point. Yeah. All right, um, we'll see hey, how Michael settles this. I. It's, it's a surprise that that Cecil was taken. But then again, Teller at this stage, stage where Dusty Griff was, that Teller was getting mighty fast. Yeah, that's true. Korgs has done a much uh, better job keeping his uh, Tela anchored here. Now, we do have a problem here for Korgs, though. Uh, this is going to be very slow. His edge is in slot four. That means that he's going to have to parry multiple times. Uh, so Dusty is going to pick up time here. So we have Crystal get at the 127.38 mark. Uh, let's keep tabs on exactly that time so we'll see how much uh how much difference if it's under three minutes then i think korgs is probably in a good position if it's over three minutes i think by virtue of a cleaner alt gauntlet from having edge in position two 90 minutes into a seat of all things could eke out a victory for dusty uh this is still extremely close <laughs> Yeah, I, as you said, this now uh, if that that edge was still in the middle, I would give it to Microcorps. But at this stage, I'm I'm going dusty, hey, because as you said, this fight is going to be really slow. Yeah, and uh, Chad is also pointing something out that's interesting. Edge with an adamant armor on at this point is going to have somewhere north of fifty agility. Uh, this spot only has 18, so even if a Wyvern showed up, you have more than enough agility to just go ahead and Star Veil or just attack or dart or whatever you want to do to it. So that's also an interesting thing to keep in mind is that, you know, you don't even necessarily have to anchor in a position like this. Uh, and we are, we are just seeing the time tick off here. This is a fight where you can't hit with physical. It's got to be magic. Yeah, jelly, slimes, and creams. Very, yeah, very physical resistant. And one flame should do it, but almost any spell would do fine. One more fight for Microcores to go through. And I wonder if we also get a swag walk from Dusty here, maybe thinking that he's on a clock and doesn't have the time to, to even save. We are now two minutes separating the runners. It was 127.38 that, uh, that Dusty picked up his crystal. We're going to be right around three minutes apart, and I think Dusty may get into the Zeromis fight first here. This is extraordinarily close, but I think Dusty, yeah, he is swag walking, I think realizing that the time is now. Uh, so chat is uh, chat's on it today, Poydrak. They're early with those Zs. Well, but uh, I, I think rightfully so. Be, They're a little this excited. This is going to be fast. <laughs> this is going to be fast on both our side, uh, both sides here. So yes, you're going to need um, the speed is absolutely required here. Uh, Zeromus doesn't move. We don't change him. And um, Dusty Griff is going to be finding out very soon, and as well as Michael Corks, Corks, what we do to Z in the, in these situations. We've got a question to ask. We'll get there to it in just a moment. Three minutes. We're going to be very close. Nose. Three minutes on the nose was the difference getting the crystal. <laughs> Dusty Griff is going to be into this fight first, most uh, most likely by about forty five seconds, and ahead of Microcorgs, which Microcorgs is bringing in battle speed up to one. Well. What's the question? Let's get it going. Well, Poydrek, uh, 
There's aromas too big, too bad, too awkward to put anywhere else. You don't want big bangs in Antlion Cave or anywhere else. So while we have this Zeromus shaking in its boots, we have to ask what those boots are going to be, and we need to know whose booty we're going to be kicking this evening. Show it to us, Zeromus. The answer is... Well, it does have a butt. Mord, Demos. No. I barely play video games. I have no idea what it's this, from. I'm not going to lie. This is Dragon Quest Eight. There you go. No, Dragon Quest... Eleven. In... Eleven. Twelve? Numbers. There, there, there's a, it's hard to read. There, there's a few. <laughs> there's a few Dragon Quests. As the, and, uh... <laughs> so Dusty is yeah. up roughly a minute, I think, starting this fight out. Uh, and the party compositions are fairly equal. Uh, Chords is ever so slightly better anchored, but that's pretty irrelevant with two Zerkers at this stage of the game. The Big Bangs are going to come out, but... Rose is going to be able to heal all the way through that. I I think, barring something odd here, we're going to be looking at a dusty win by probably 45 seconds, maybe a minute. But this has been extremely close all the way through, and it's wild to think that an edge using black magic at the 90-minute mark could have been the deciding factor in a race. <laughs> yeah. That um, if it it all really comes down to that to that that all call it it these two have been neck and neck. But, uh, the lead has changed hands a, few, a number of times as we thought that Microcorps might have got, got got it back with that pass, but that all call it just switched it around again. Dusty got into the Z fight first, and we'll see if he could take it home. Yeah, well, it looks like we have Sid acting as a chemist on Corbs' side while Rosa is reflecting whites. Uh, I don't think we've seen a Bacchus come out on Sid yet. So maybe we get one after this, uh, but we are seeing, I believe that is a second Big Bang now on Dusty Griff's side, uh, pushing somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 7,000 around. So we, we're getting close to the rock stage, I believe, on Dusty's side. Yeah, uh, but we're we going to get there hole. pretty quick. Yeah, we're going to get there pretty quick on Microcorp's side. Those whites are, yeah, they're a little bit slow to come out, but they're not that, they're, they're effective. So yeah, there's, there's rocks on Dusty's. I don't think we're too far behind on Microcorp's, actually. I think we're really close. Yeah, the whites are huge. I mean, big, big damage coming out. Uh, but rocks fall. There is a flash, the crack, the boom. Zeromus is down on Dusty's side with a time of 134.39. Uh, Dusty Griff, barring ties, uh, which I think we're outside the realm of now. Uh, we Dusty are. It's only three seconds. Winner. Uh, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> What a race, y'all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, there is a second Big Bang on Michael's side. So, yeah, th not quite as far along as I I, I thought, but not too... Uh, it's not too far behind, I feel. Meanwhile, Dusty Griff has joined us in the booth after his victory. Um, close one, it seems. GG, Dusty. That tight. <laughs> GG is. Yeah, that corks puts up a fight that's for sure <laughs> uh but yeah that's uh i knew it was going to be another awesome race our first race was extremely close too and uh yeah this one did not disappoint me i hope it didn't disappoint the viewers either because yeah we'll have that time come in and talk with korgs after wow yeah there's been a lot of fight night races in this and you've been in a number of them, um, but how did this, this particular seed back up the you other one so far? Uh, I feel like um, 
I feel like a lot of my seeds have played out very similarly. This might be my cleanest played one um, so far, I think. So it's going to be interesting going to the brackets because I was going to have to change things up again a little bit. Uh, but yeah, compared to everything else that's happened, this has kind of been, I, I don't know if I'd say standard because this one was kind of strange at the beginning. Du <laughs> Double Tella, like 10 minutes <laughs> in or whatever. <laughs> I was like, uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, so I actually, uh, it was interesting because I, I feel like I made sort of the wrong decision early where I, I, I went gung-ho for ordeals and maybe if I had have went and got that edge early, it would have sped things up a little faster and made the seeds start going a little faster for me. But uh, I mean, it worked out. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, it was, it was just a lot of kind of weird decisions early. But then once the weird decisions were out of the way in terms of like, <laughs> what do I do with a sin to tell us? Um, the seed kind of played sort of linearly for me. It, it's kind of strange because I, I really dislike things like going back down the Fey March, but when one of the Fey March bosses is your objective, it's like that's sometimes unavoidable if the other spot has a, a gross boss in it, which I did not want to do Mom Bomb at level 20, whatever I was at the time. So yeah, this was pretty interesting. I have uh, two kind of early game questions for you, and then I'll, I'll let Poidrak run with things. Um, the the first question I had, when you're seeing that Odin, Hook Route, two Tellas, and Edward, a Sid, pre-Edge, because you hadn't seen Edge at that point, <laughs> what's, what's running through your mind with that boss there and that party? Are, are you thinking like, Am I doing double lit three Tella on an Odin? Am I, I do, like, what's your thought process on that? Exact thing that went <laughs> through my mind was like, how am I space? Like, how am I get? How am I setting up the double lit three on this bad boy right now? And also went through my mind of, oh dear God, <laughs> what am I? What am I going to do? But uh, yeah, I, I mean, the great thing about this set, as, as folks know, is, is you do get. Uh, an abundance of gear and since Eblen Castle has made it into the meta and I've kind of taken that up as well which is like against everything I've, <laughs> I've ever done I feel like putting Eblen Castle into the play but it feels really good though because you get you get geared up so early uh, so I, did, I even though at first I was like oh, yikes <laughs> seeing uh, Odin there it was kind of like oh I'm, I actually feel like I'll be able to set this up quite nicely uh, depending on things plus with that spot, I feel like, um, if I recall correctly, the amount of damage Odin does, as long as I got some levels on Sid, we would probably be okay. Um, but yeah, it, it still doesn't feel very good to see Odin there, especially with, you know, max cap four characters and stuff. That's always rough. But uh, yeah, then things worked out with Magma Key. I was a sigh of relief to get the Magma Key, for sure. Yeah, I imagined it would have been, um, and you actually cut into the second question I had, which was uh, Castle Eblen. I was wondering if that was kind of maybe a throwback or, uh, you know, to, to the race with Commander where he spiked the two adamant armors against you and you, you didn't want to run that risk again of maybe falling victim to Eblen Castle, or if it's just something that now is part of this exact meta that you wanted to route in more, so... <laughs> It's, it's exactly that. You're exactly right. It's pretty much exactly that commander race told me never do that again and never skip this again. But I, I mean, to be totally fair and, and like that doesn't take anything away from commander's win or anything. His, his, he played amazingly that race and deserved right. to win. But uh, but also it, it did make me realize that I think I, I was missing something with this flag set, which was how good Eblen was early due to you know holding back things like adamant armors and whatnot and uh, crystal swords that that sort of thing which obviously flips the seed on jet speed uh you know uh if you get them so and other and not only that but i guess it, it also just pretty much works out your whole gear route, route for the seed like I, I don't know if i wrote gear like did any treasures anymore after eblon uh, i did some early obviously but prior to that to get set up but uh yeah, now I'm kind of into the motion of I do have a lot early and I don't do any more treasures after, so it kind of feels nice. So let's talk about the future. You're, you, you've you won your group. Tough group. 
now you've got to go up against, in the brackets, either Pyop or Bad Comma, depending on who wins their particular uh, uh, playoff. The flags are changing. They're going to be a little bit more stringent. How is how is your how are you going to change things up for that? Oh yeah, we can pass some music. Yeah, to uh, to your question there, Poydrick. Um, yeah, I I feel like I do better on stringent flags. So it's an interesting, it's a really interesting question because I feel like I I don't do so well <laughs> or like I struggle on flags. It's like this where you're given a lot. <laughs> I actually like having a lot taken away from me in terms of um, items and stuff and, and being put through the ringer a little bit. So I feel like I might do better on brackets. But to be honest, I haven't played much brackets yet because i've been mostly focused on groups so it's going to be interesting and pyre whether it be pyre or karma that i face i know they've both been playing amazingly well and they, they both have good histories with uh free enterprise so I, i'm pretty excited to, to race either of them yeah i i have the same thing i i feel i do a little bit better with less to work with and you yeah. just get given so much in this this so uh, I'm I'm going to feel pretty similar if I get through my playoff. So, uh, yeah, I completely understand where you're going from um, from there. Yeah, but really now, just let's see. Yeah, let's see you in the brackets. Let's uh, go from there and see what happens. I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Thank thank you both for commentating. Thank you, uh, uh, Scala, for uh, restreaming. Uh, J Mac for uh, doing uh, tracking and uh, GG's to Korgs. Korgs has played amazingly in this tournament um and the r2 races have been so hype um and best of luck to him uh moving on and yeah gg is looking forward to the rest thank you very much and we did see michael Korg's finish with at one hour 36 minutes and seven seconds we have been joined by the very small corks himself uh Two very tight races against Dusty Griff, both with you on the losing end. It must must be a little bit frustrating. I suppose. I mean, uh, one one races, one wants to win. But um, I really enjoyed the races, and I liked how the end of this played out. It gave me a lot of hope. When uh, in my my long fate of Fay March, I don't know if you noticed when I got the rose on the moon, I, I made one motion to go to leave. And I said, you know what? I'm here. I have adamant. I have sirens and hourglasses. Let's just take care of this moon. And every time I finished a check, I was just kind of, I had a mantra. I was chanting. I was like, earth crystal pass, earth crystal pass. Give me one of those up here uh, at least. Um, and of, of course it turned out the whole chain from Luca um, helped out. Um, yeah. And, and so when I returned to earth, and I opened the freebie in Fae March, I breathed the sigh of relief. And when the very easy dolls didn't yield the earth crystal, I breathed the sigh of relief. And then I got the pass from Mom Bomb. And I said, well, Dusty probably did the dolls earlier than I did, but there's a good chance maybe he didn't do the Mom Bomb. And I said, okay, maybe things are turning up my way. And uh, <laughs> I, I was watching during the 15 minutes, I was watching the restream and it's just incredible how that that gauntlet in Zot, my battle speed down, and, edge in the wrong spot uh, just little tiny things when you're racing someone as uh, proficient as Zesty you're just going to get you like that but overall really fun race all, all really, yeah we can say hey, the lead was uh, uh, went to and fro between you all the way through the race uh, but it really all came down in the end to that one fight against the old gauntlet uh, you being slightly out of position, making it a little bit longer. It just decision things that didn't quite add up on the at the end of the uh, end of the day. Yeah, I was hearing and, and reading the chat during the 15 minutes, and and folks are pointing out, you know, I probably didn't even have because I, I was a little scared of Wyvern. Uh, I probably didn't need to drop my battle speed if I just put Edge in the middle. He would have outsped, but that's kind of 
you know, I, I feel I have good knowledge of, of the game and the bosses, but the minutia of stuff like that is is where my knowledge kind of, um, you know, it escapes a little bit sometimes. Uh, maybe a little bit of race brain, but you know, I knew enough to take the chocobo with the with the falcon sitting there. But uh, but yeah, uh, I, I didn't account for the possibility of the gauntlet. Yeah, so a, a similar question that uh, I, I had for uh, for Dusty Griffin and GG's, by the way, Corey's very well run race. Uh, and, you know, do not get down on yourself at all. You played extremely well. Uh, when you initially saw that Odin with the party composition that you had and you're seeing like two Tellas and an Edward and the Sid and you're, you're sitting there probably wondering what the heck am I going to do? And then that sigh of relief when you get the magma key kind of walk us through like your early game thought process with the very unique double Tella and, and the other things that were going on. I was, I was laughing at that a double Tella. That's two lit threes coming out. If, if he doesn't get hit. Uh, but yeah, no, that, that there was some apprehension there when I found the Artemis bow and I had the lit arrows, a little of that went away. I was figuring probably you know, if, if that was going to be my party, there's probably going to be some kind of thunderstruck happening. Uh, like Sid's HP at that spot maybe is enough to outlast some things and kind of do a um, just a brute force thunderstruck. I, yeah, and and actually that was as I was doing the back attack spot on Odin uh, on on ordeals. That's what was in my head. And then, like you said, I found the magma key and all that vanished from my head. Gratefully. Yeah, absolutely. And your your decision, um, you know, in many different facets of the race, like save scumming the sand ruby, we thought was great. The the swag chocobo that wasn't swag. It was just, you know, honestly, it, it, the correct move on your part. Like a lot yeah, of the minor things were extraordinarily good. And, you know, I, I would not let that one alt gauntlet get you down. I know it, it obviously made an impact on the race, whether or not it would have flipped it one way or the other remains to be seen someone would have to retime it but you know so many of the things you did were absolutely wonderful in the race i think that cannot be stated you know enough and but, i'm well, super looking forward to you playing your next opponent no i mean yes state it more keep going all the stuff you're saying is great <laughs> uh but but yeah so i i got some work ahead of me i get to race you know if I'd won this, then it would have guaranteed me in brackets, and uh, I have not. I played maybe a half of a bracket seed, and I haven't. You know, it's a, obviously a tougher flag set. Uh, so, assuming I can, I think I have to win against the winner of uh, an upcoming race. I think between Commander and Rex. So, if I can, if I can get a win there, then I have to start looking at these these bracket seeds. And I haven't looked ahead too much, but I, I think losing here, if I do manage to make brackets, I think that puts me in nice and cozy on your side, Possum. Uh, I believe that would be correct. I think you would draw in Phineas first, I want to say. That is correct, yeah. Yeah, which is, uh, yeah, best of luck to both of you if that were to be the matchup. That would be an incredibly hype uh, round of 32 match. Yeah, but let's not get ahead of myself. I get to race these fun and generous flags uh, one more time and looking forward to uh, figuring out when uh, when I can race that winner. Looking forward to watching that that race between Commander and Rex. Good luck to both of them. And then we'll duke it out for the shot at tougher flags and challenging opponents. Uh, your your routine today was a must class. Us, hopefully we'll see it again and um, well, we will see it. We will see it again down the line. So we're all, we're all looking forward to that. Tough luck for today, but good luck for your next race. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, J Mac and Scala, for what you're doing. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Glad that we could uh, put on a nice close race. I know as a viewer, I always like when the when both runners are at Z. So that's if it can't win, uh, that's that's the way you're going to lose. Have a great night. Take care, Cord. GG again. So I do believe we've finished on this side. The Dragoon Helm. Um, group may have its winner, but I believe we're going over to another tiebreaker, aren't we? Yeah, so before we head on over to that tiebreaker for the Age of Shield group uh, between Elven Sorrow and Zyrak, uh, actually play-in race 
uh, as they have already done their tiebreaker and earned the right to play in, uh, we do want to give one last shout out to everyone involved with tonight's restream. First and foremost, our runners, uh, Korgs and Dusty, putting on one whale of a show for everybody. Uh, so huge shout outs to them. Again, Scala Kitty in the background, keeping us all in line. J Mac uh, for pushing the buttons and not eating them, as uh, yours truly is wont to do. And Poydrek again for, uh, for keeping me in line on comms. Uh, greatly appreciate everyone's work throughout the tournament and today. Fantastic job, y'all. Um, yeah, I kept you in line. When did that happen? I don't know. Probably when we we're talking about something that wasn't race related. <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> but yeah, that is going to do it for us here on RPG Limit Break. Thank you, as always, to RPG Limit Break for hosting the free enterprise events when we have them. Uh, amazing partner to to be, uh, you know, if you will, doing business with. So great job, uh, you know, to RPG Limit Break and everyone behind the scenes. We are again going over to Free Enterprise 2. If you haven't already followed the Free Enterprise 2 channel, go ahead and push that button when you get over there. And that Age of Shield play-in race is between Elven Sorrow and Zyrak, a battle to make bracket brackets. So please, no spoilers, uh, or else you will get the bonk. We'll see y'all over there, friends. Newspapers for all. See you soon.